Hey everyone, this is Charles of the Pamper Chef Merced. Um, today I'm going to be doing a recipe. I'm going to be showing you guys how to cook something. Um, through the magic of movie making and what I've learned on the computer so far, um, you're not going to have to watch me do the monotonous uh, activities that include prep time and everything else like that. I'm basically just going to zip from one step to the other um, and kind of show you how to do this. Uh, this recipe is a turkey meatloaf cupcake and you'll see why it's called that at the end. Um, it's a... Uh, Recipe is on the website, the Pamper Chef Merced on Facebook. Uh, you can always share the picture, and when you share the picture, what it does is it stores it in your pictures and on your timeline, so that way you have it. You never have to go look for it. You always know where it's at. Plus, it's a nice recipe that you might want to share with your friends and families. Um, it's really healthy. It's made from ground turkey. Um, that's a really good alternative to eating, like, you know, uh, uh, beef and, and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to bake mine. The baking time is about 25 minutes to bake it, plus about an additional 5 minutes for prep time. So you figure it's about 30 minutes from start to finish uh, that this has. I'm going to be using the single serving pan. Uh, it's one of the new stoneware items uh, from Pepper Chef. Uh, this thing is only $29.50. This thing is awesome. I've already made uh, different types of meatloafs with it uh, because personally in my household some people don't like certain vegetables like my son doesn't like to have jalapenos but yet I do so it allows me to make basically a meatloaf and then I can just stick and make his separately from mine I don't have to worry about him picking things out or having to waste food or anything like that it allows you to do six things individually they're great for baking you can bake uh, little cakes little cupcakes you can just do anything that your imagination can let you get away with in this pan and it's awesome it's part of the stoneware it's non-stick um, I believe it has a, a three-year uh, warranty on it, so you're good to go if anything happens within the three years. Definitely worth the money. Um, so basically, I'm going to just walk you through it, and through, uh, through the magic of flip-flopping from scene to scene, we're going to get it done, so let's get to work. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to portion out the cheese, and for that, we're going to use the Pamper Chef Digital Scale. Uh, this thing really, uh, comes in really handy. It actually um, can be adjustable. It goes from either grams or it can do pounds. So since this recipe is for six individual um, turkey meatloafs, um, the recipe calls for 60 grams of total cheese. So we're figuring if there's six, you know, uh, six uh, muffins that we're going to make of the of the turkey meatloaf, uh, then we can pretty much guess that's about 10 grams per uh, per meatloaf. So what we're going to do is I'll just I cut some uh, little squares of uh, sharp cheddar cheese, and all we're going to do is I'm going to set it to the grams, which I already got it on. Uh, that's what I do most of my measuring on. And I'm just going to go ahead, and since it's about 10 grams each, we're going to go ahead and just try to weigh these little blocks of cheese out just so that way it hits 10 grams. So that way we know we're not over we're not overstuffing um, the turkey meatloaf. Okay, what we got going now is I'm going to make some of the breadcrumbs that we got to uh, put in for the meatloaf. Uh, this is where this can start to become more of a money saver. Um, instead of buying like the cans of already seasoned breadcrumbs, uh, you can do it yourself really easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the manual food processor. Uh, this thing's pretty awesome. I use it quite a bit. I use this and the food chopper very, very, very often. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some leftover sourdough bread, or actually French bread that I had in the refrigerator uh, from when we had pasta the other night. And instead of letting the bread go to waste, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use it and do my breadcrumbs. And this thing's really handy damn All you do is just keep working the forearms like that. Um, when you do it though, you might want to kind of every once in a while just kind of stop, shake it up so that way those big chunks at the bottom. Um, it takes a little more effort than just plugging um, than just plugging a food processor in or a blender and, and, and doing it very quickly. Uh, these things are great. They're, the kids can help you out if you just need like the little extra help and that little that little, that little time-consuming part of whatever meal you're like, man, I just wish that was already prepared. You can have the kiddos do this for you. This is really easy. Um, it actually allows people to help out in the kitchen that might not otherwise uh, be able to work. You know, electronic devices, or maybe they're just accident-prone, like a lot of people I know. Um, so this is kind of like a little safer. Plus, if you go camping often, um, and you're in the wilderness, or you know, any basically anywhere where you don't really have a whole lot of electricity. Things are awesome, no power. The only power is right here in your hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this out just so you can kind of see what we're working with. Voila, fresh breadcrumbs. 
You can use any type of bread you want. Um, I'm making a turkey meatloaf, just staying on the healthy tip. Um, if you want to keep the healthy tip going, um, you can use wheat bread. You can use uh, uh, your glucose-free bread if you if you have to watch your glucose uh, intake. Um, really good stuff. Really cheap. Saves money. One less trip to the grocery store. Okay, now we're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna kind of prep, I guess, in a way. This is a little bit of the ingredients, but it's also some of the garnish that you're gonna have at the end. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna prep some of that up uh, just to kind of save us some time. Uh, so. We're going to do some green onions and some parsley. Uh, I'm going to use my favorite, favorite, favorite item uh, that I've gotten from Pamper Chef. I swear I've beaten the crap out of this thing and it still keeps it licking and keeps on ticking. So it's awesome for chopping up herbs. Uh, fine chopping if you have the dice or mints or anything like that. Um, if you're trying to julienne something like onions, like fajitas and stuff like that, the manual food, presser, food processor that I used for the breadcrumbs, uh, that thing's awesome. Uh, you know, the more the more repetitions you take, the more and more finer it gets chopped up, so you can easily regulate how how uh, how big or small you want all your chunks to be. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do us uh, we're gonna do the parsley first. So what I did was I just got me a fresh uh, uh, peeled off of, off a fresh batch of uh, broccoli or broccoli parsley. Uh, got the parsley at the flea market. Like I've always said, um, try to buy local, uh, support your local agriculture. Uh, find your local flea markets or your uh, your any type of, uh, of social community event that has like uh, people selling their own produce. That's the best way to go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're basically just got a bunch of parsley and we're just gonna stick it right on top right here and we're just gonna pound it a few times. Oh yeah, chopped parsley. Come on now, you didn't even have to bust your knuckles. Okay, so we got our parsley right there. A good uh, a good restaurant trick to make your parsley last a little bit longer. Um, most of the time, it's better to use like a linen cloth, uh, so that way it doesn't rip on you. But you can use a paper towel if you have a heavy-duty paper towel. And a good way to do it is you get it all in the middle of the paper towel. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of fold it up. And just kind of work it around it, and then we're just going to twist it. You see how uh, it gets green? It takes all that that uh, the water out of there, so it makes it uh, it doesn't go brown as fast. Okay. Beautiful, fresh chopped parsley. From God's fingers to your tummy. That's the way we want it. Okay. So now we got our parsley there, and we're going to do the same thing with the green onions. We're just probably going to. Cut them up a little smaller so they fit perfect. We're just going to shove them in there. There you go. Chopped green onions. See that? The only not, only time I used my knife was to cut the tips the fun off stuff. of the green onions. And that's where we're going to make the turkey meatloaf on its own. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to follow the directions, but me personally, I like to add a little bit something to it, just the stuff that I like. Um, so I went ahead and added some uh, some garlic and some chopped uh, yellow onions. Um, but I also added the parsley and the green onions that I had chopped up with the food chopper. <clears throat> Be sure to save some of the parsley and put it to the side because you're going to need that as a garnish for later on. So in here I got my turkey, um, I have my shallots, I have my, uh, my parsley, and then I added some uh, fresh garlic using the garlic press. That thing is awesome. And I uh, chopped up some yellow onion. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to use my Pepper Chef measuring tool. These come in uh, teaspoons and tablespoons. These things are awesome. Uh, you pretty much put it wherever you need the measurement to go, and then that's how much it's going to fill up. So it's great. So we're going to do a half a teaspoon of both salt and pepper. half a cup of chili sauce and then we're going to add one egg and with the egg we're going to also have a uh, one egg yolk so you're going to crack one egg and you're just going to toss it in there and then all we need is just this one egg yolk 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to empty out all the egg whites out of this one into a bowl. And what I'll do with the egg whites is I'll probably, uh, well, probably I will, uh, just so that way my dog doesn't bother us during dinner time. Um, I'll cook off the egg whites and I'll put it in her bowl so that way the food doesn't get wasted. Um, my dog's a little plumper so she can kind of, uh, it'll probably benefit her to just have the egg whites and not the yolk with it as well. So we're just going to set that off to the side and then this is the fun part. We're basically going to, we're going to take our handy dandy Pamper Chef mix and chop and we're just going to sit here and we're just going to mix it all up with this. Me personally, I still really much enjoy um, <coughs> using my hands. It's just something about getting your hands dirty. Uh, don't forget the breadcrumbs. We're going to toss some of those in there. That's going to help make it nice and stiff for us. And the mixing chop's great because look at how it's already started to mix everything up. It's just wonderful. You don't have to get your hands dirty or anything like that. Well, I'm sure you'll get your hands dirty at some point, but you know what I'm saying. And you just take your spatula. And you just scrape off whatever seems to stick on there. Scrape, make, make sure to scrape the side of the bowl. Always want to get everything in there. We have our turkey meatloaf mix. You can add as much or as little of the ingredients as you'd like. Um, you can add, you know, Italian seasoning to it if that's what you would like. Um, if you want to have like a taco flavored, you can buy like the packets of taco seasoning, throw it on there, season it any way you want. So there you go. Now we're ready to put it inside the single serving. Okay, now we get to bring out the big guns. We get to pull out the six shooter. I call it because it looks like a little revolver six shooter. Bang, bang, bang. So we're gonna take these uh, the, some of the breadcrumbs that we had set to the side that we didn't put inside the mix. And what I did was I sprayed the inside with canola oil and we're just gonna kind of coat the inside with it. And when I say coat, um, I would probably just take it and since the, the canola oil is gonna kind of make some of the bread stick to the sides, that's okay. But what I would try to do is get a somewhat of a thin layer at the bottom because when these things come out, you gotta remember what's on the bottom is gonna end up being on top. So if you want to have like that, like maybe a little crustiest, like crustiest type, you know, breadcrumb. I know me personally, I like my meatloaf a little crispy on top. You can always do that, like add more or less, however you want, uh, depending on your taste. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the the turkey meatloaf ball, uh, uh, cakes, and we're gonna add the cheese to it, and we're gonna put them inside uh, the single serving uh, baker. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the Pamper Chef uh, metal scoop. This is a two tablespoon two tablespoon scoop. There's actually three of them. There's a one tablespoon, a two tablespoon, and a three tablespoon. Uh, the recipe calls to use about, uh, I think it was two of the three tablespoon scoops. What we're going to do is we're just going to do two and a half of these. And it seems to work out perfect. I've already done one just to kind of gauge myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one, two, and then maybe like a half of one. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to roll this up into a ball. And then we're going to take a piece of the cheese and we're just going to stick it in there and we're just going to rotate that ball around it. We're just going to kind of treat it like a meatball almost. We're just going to sit there and just going to kind of form it, see, until it's into a little ball. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plop it right inside, right on top of the breadcrumbs. And then when you want to push it down so that way it flattens out and it covers the surface, but try to get your finger in the middle and see, and just try to push that piece of cheese down more so to the bottom. Um, you don't want it to touch the bottom because then it might, uh, you know, stick to the bottom. Or, well, it won't stick, but you know, to have that like that cheesy, that burnt cheesy, and we want it to be really like you know solid and solidified on the inside. What I usually, uh, what I've been doing is uh, when I do the balls and I fill the cheese, whatever 
side the cheese is mostly on I put that at the top so that way when I push it down um, it doesn't hit all the way to the bottom it kind of just stays right there in the middle just a little advice Some culinary advice And what I like to do whenever I do meatloaf is I'll always kind of push down. I'll go around it with my fingers. And that's just to kind of uh, push the air out a little bit. Normally if I use like a metal pan, uh, you could always bang it a couple times on, on top of the counter just to kind of get everything to settle. Um, but you're, I'm using the stoneware, so there's no way in heck that you're going to get me to bang the stoneware on top of the counter. Um, so we're just going to have to go ahead and, and work it with our fingers the best we can. And there you go. They fit nice and snug right inside single server baker. Okay, so we're ready to put it in the oven. Um, we're gonna put it in for 25 minutes. Uh, that's what we're gonna bake it for. If you were to do it in the microwave from the instructions that are on the uh, recipe on the website, um, you'd actually only microwave it for, I believe, seven to nine minutes um, uncovered. So, you know, that just makes it, you know, even easier. But we're gonna bake it. So I'm gonna throw it in there. I'm gonna set my handy dandy pamper chef timer, which is gonna let me know when it's done. And while that's going, you're definitely gonna need some mashed potatoes. Now, the mashed potatoes, I didn't show you how to do those because pretty much I think everybody can figure out how to make mashed potatoes. Um, if you don't know how to make mashed potatoes, there's plenty of packets of pre-made stuff that are in the stores that you can always buy and use as well. So at this point, while this is going in the oven, it'd be a good time to get your potatoes going, uh, get them boiling for about 10 minutes, and go ahead and do however you want your mashed potatoes. I know everybody's probably got a little bit of different uh, styles of doing it. But just go ahead and get it done, and then just set that to the side until the, uh, until the turkey meatloaf cupcakes are, are done in the oven, and then we'll show you what to do with it. Okay, so the timer went off. Uh, the turkey meatloaf cupcakes, they're done. They're sitting in the oven. Uh, what we want to do first, though, is you want to take the mashed potatoes that I had told you about before we put the, uh, the whole thing in the oven, and you want to just kind of reheat those. If, you're, if they're fresh out the pot and they're still warm, don't worry about it. You don't need to do the whole microwaving process. But if you did it ahead of time or maybe you have leftovers from the night before, just go ahead and heat them up and just get them warm. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little bit of sour cream, and we're just going to mix a little bit of sour cream in there. Uh, depending on how much you made, like I said, I only made enough for maybe about two or three people in this. So it really depends on how much you like sour cream, how little you don't, how many people that you have eating. And so we're just basically going to mix it up just like that so it's nice and creamy. Okay, so I just pulled the turkey meatloaf cupcakes out. And let me tell you, I'm glad I recorded it because this is my first time doing it. And they turned out great from the looks of it. Um, you can see that they turned a nice brown color. That's how you know it's done, especially if you can feel it and it feels firm, then you know it's just like any other meat and it's cooked pretty good. So what we're going to do now is the moment of truth is we're going to cut it open and see if we can get it to look like the picture on the website. So actually, you know what, I'm skipping a step. What we need to do is to do the top part, okay? So this is where the mashed potatoes come in. So what we're going to do is, we're going to set that like that. We're going to take our scoop that we used to portion it out, cleaned of course, and we're going to put it right on top. Kind of, it kind of uh, acts as a uh, frosting on a cupcake. That's why it's a turkey cupcake. And then with that extra parsley that I told you to hold on to, what we're going to do is we're just going to sprinkle a little bit of it just on top. Okay. Booyah, there you go. Turkey meatloaf cupcake. Now the moment of truth is to see if we can get that cheese that would act like a custard. Oh my goodness. I hope you can see that. Just like the picture. 
Who gives it to you straight? Turkey, meatloaf, cupcakes. Manja.